Is turning the other cheek a Jewish value? Dear Rabbi, I have been under the impression that turning the other cheek to your enemies is not a Jewish approach. But recently a friend pointed out the verse in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 30, Let him offer his cheek to his smiter, let him be filled with reproach. So now I'm confused. One, is it or is it not a Jewish value? Two, if it is, how does that jib with the Talmudic dictum? If someone is coming to kill you, kill him first. Answer, don't turn the other cheek. It is clear that turning the other cheek to a violent aggressor is not the Jewish way. King Solomon, wisest of all men, proclaim, There is a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. There is no doubt that there are times when it is necessary to battle adversaries. In fact, throughout the biblical account of history, the Jewish people were commanded to strike at their enemies, sometimes even preemptively, as you pointed out correctly, our sages instruct, if someone comes to kill you, you should rise up and kill him first. The context counts. As often happens, the original phrase and the context of the surrounding passage has a completely different connotation than it has on its own. In fact, there is nothing in that passage about an enemy or being under attack. And if it were not for the word smiter, we would not even know that there was another person involved, since the rest of the passage clearly attributes the afflictions to the hand of God. Let's examine the prophecy in its context. The prophecy refers to a crucial point in history when the Holy Temple lies in ruins and the Jewish nation has been exiled. Moral is at an all-time low, and fighting back is not logically possible. So, Jeremiah does not lecture about the importance of self-defense. That would be futile. Instead, he offers hope, comfort, and perspective to sustain the Jewish people in exile. After lamenting at considerable length about his suffering and despair, Jeremiah turns to hope, saying, This I reply to my heart, therefore, I have hope. Verily, the kindness of the Lord never ceases. Indeed, his mercies never fall. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. He then elaborates on that hope, expressing faith in God's mercy. It is good for a man that he bear a yoke in his youth. Let him sit solitary and wait, for he has laid it upon him. Let him put his mouth into the dust. There may be yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to his smiter, let him be filled with reproach, for the Lord will not cast him off forever. Though he cause grief, he will yet have compassion according to the abundance of his kindness, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve the sons of man. Toward the end of the chapter, lest one think that he was absolving the perpetrators of what they have done, Jeremiah calls on God to punish and destroy them. My enemies have hunted me like a bird, without cause. I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You did draw me near. I called on you. You did say, Do not fear. We quit them, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them a weakness of heart. May your curse be upon them. Pursue them in anger and destroy them from under the heavens of the Lord. It becomes clear that the remark about offering the cheek is not said in relation to confrontation with an adversary, rather, the remark is made within the context of hope and consolation. A true lesson from the verse. According to Rabbi Moshe Alsek, 1508 to 1593, the verse, it is good for a man that he bear a yoke in his youth means that when a person is afflicted with tragedies in the physical world, the person should remember that God is all merciful and good. The purpose of one's suffering may very well be in order that she or he will receive a greater reward at a future time, in this world or the next. Rabbi Moshe bin Nachman, Nachmanides, explains that mild suffering in this world can save one from severe judgment in the coming world. And Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Laiety 
compares the physical world spiritually world parallel to the sun and its shadow. Anytime the sun moves, shadows on earth are altered. To us, thousands of miles below, the change may be so slight and gradual that we hardly notice, but something big is going on in the galaxy. The sun is in orbit. In the same way, the goings on in our world are a reflection and result of the going on above. So, the instruction, let him offer his cheek to his smiter, let him be filled with reproach, is a guideline for attitude in the face of adversary. We are expected to receive our afflictions with the knowledge and belief that all God does is ultimately for the good, even if the purpose is not apparent. According to Rabbi Isaac Gloria, the Arizal, when we adopt this attitude towards our suffering, we will merit to not actually suffer at the hands of those enemies.